Are you looking to use Skype to teach online? If you are, this is the perfect video. I've been using Skype for teaching online for over 10 years. I'm gonna show you the latest version, the 2022, and I'm gonna take you through all the key things like screen sharing, like sharing video, like using the chat, sharing files, using the subtitles, using the reactions. There are many, many things that we can do, including polls. This video is gonna take you through absolutely everything. One of the first things you're gonna to wanna to do is to find your student. Obviously you can't contact your student unless you can find them and invite them to connect with you. So go to your contacts and in your contacts, click on new contact and then just start to write the name of the student or if you know their username. So for example, I'm gonna search here for someone and then I need to click on add. Now that will send a message to that person and then that person will be able to just agree to join and connect with me and it's very simple. Now what I can do now once I've invited that person is come down in my contacts, come down to Ivona, so I've just come down to here through my contacts, come to Ivona and I'm going to say hi and that will be an opportunity now for uh, Ivona to accept my invitation and respond to me. Before you make a call, it's always a good idea to check that your video is working. What you do is you come up to here, click on your settings and just come down to video and audio. And you should see, there I am on the camera, that the camera's on. If not, what you can do is often click here and it will give you a list of your cameras. Click on the correct one. So I've clicked on my one now and then you should find that it connects. Now notice also that you can choose a background. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add blur. So you'll suddenly notice that the background blurs a little bit and that's quite a good idea. Um, so just it kind of looks a little bit more professional. You do actually have other options. So for example, if you wanted to add this kind of look at the back, you could do that as well. In fact, that looks quite good. Let's leave that on. So what I'm going to do now is make the phone call. So I'm just going to press on this button here. And it starts to ring. And we can see now that Ivona is on the other end. Hello, Ivona. Hello. Okay, so we've looked at making a call and connecting with our students. Now I'm going to show you the most important thing, which is how do you screen share? How do you share what's on your screen so that the students can see it as well? And there are a couple of things that are really confusing and I want to make really clear when we screen share. So let's get into screen sharing. So what I'm going to do now is call my student. So I'm going to click on this button here. And my student comes in. Hi, Ivona. Hello. Hi, right, good. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to screen share. Ivona, I'm going to share the screen. I want you to tell me what you can see, okay? Okay, no problem. So I'm going to click on share screen. And the first thing I'm going to do, the most important thing I'm going to show you is this option here, which is called desktop. Now, if I click on desktop, it will show Ivana whatever is on my desktop at this moment. So if I click on start sharing now, Ivana will actually see herself. But if I now minimize, Ivana, what can you see now? I can see your desktop. Exactly. Ivana can see my desktop now. Now, what about if I was to open up, for example, Camtasia? Tell, tell me what you can see now. I can see your Camtasia. Right. Okay. Now let's just try another. Let's see if I click up on click on Microsoft Edge. What can you see now? Uh, I can see a Microsoft Edge uh, page. Exactly. Okay. So when you share the desktop with a student, every different page that you open, the student will be able to see you now. Now, I just want to talk about screen sharing. In the example you just saw me do, I screen shared my desktop, and that's the way I like to work. And the reason is, is because if I jump on my desktop from one page to another, 
the students can also see that they follow everything that I open on the screen. In other words, whatever I can see on the screen of my computer, they can see on the screen of their computer. And that means, and you have to be careful, that if you are screen sharing and you can see them on their computer, in other words, you've got the Skype window open, that is exactly what they will see. So remember, when you screen share, minimize the Skype window so that the students can then begin to see exactly what it's on your desktop or on your website or on your video or whatever you want to share. Now the other way of sharing is to share a specific window and you can do that. The problem is that I often find it doesn't work in Skype. The other problem is that if you share a specific window, it means that if you jump to something else, the students won't necessarily see it because if you jump between two different applications that means a different window the students won't see it so my advice is to share what's on your desktop but make sure that you've only got open things on your desktop that you definitely want to share with your students close everything else down one of the most common things we want to do in Skype is share video or get our students to play video. And I'm going to show you both ways of doing this now. We're going to concentrate on how we can make sure that our students can watch a video that we might want to watch with them, perhaps to discuss afterwards, to get ideas from, etc. Okay, Ivana, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to screen share a video and I want you to tell me whether you can hear the video. So I'm going to click on screen share. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on desktop and I'm going to click on share computer. Now remember, when you share your desktop, you must change your window immediately so that the student can see what you want to share because you're sharing your desktop and they will see whatever is on your desktop. So I click on start sharing. Now, hopefully, you should see a video. Yes, I can I'll... see I can see YouTube video. Right, now I'm going to play it to you. All I want to know is can you hear it? So I'm just going to play it a little bit. Ty jesteś? Yes. No, <laughs> cześć Żaneta. Jak miło, że wpadłaś. Żanet, kochana. Ja... So, Iwona, could you hear that? Yes, perfectly well. Okay, so the important thing is, and I'm just going to go back through this again, I'm going to stop sharing and just come back again to the main window. So let me just minimize this so that I can get back to Skype. And in Skype, it's really important that when you screen share, if you're going to share a video, that you click on the desktop, you click on share sound, and then you click on start sharing. Make sure you change the window because at the moment she can see herself because that's what you're sharing. You're sharing your desktop and she's on it. You need to minimize that and come to the page where you want her to see. So now she will be able to see whatever is on your desktop. Okay, so that is the secret when working with Skype. Most teachers, what they get confused at is that they screen share, but they forget then to move to the specific page. So we can screen share video, but we must remember to share the sound so the students can hear. But of course, the other way that we can screen share video is simply, or share video, is simply to sh go to a video click on the link and then share that in the chat window and later on in the video i'm going to show you how to share things in the chat window because we can share videos we can share links to websites we can share images etc you might have not realized but you can create polls and get your students to answer them but you can even get your students to create polls that other students can answer or you can answer so what we're going to concentrate on now is creating polls just a really quick break from the video. I hope you're enjoying the video, and if you are, please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. Loads more free videos that you can access. You can also find out about all my courses. They're always advertised on the opening page. And please sign up to the newsletter. If you sign up to the newsletter, you get updated with all the blog posts, the webinars, the online courses, and the videos. And at the moment, if you sign up, there is a 12-part free video course in using technology in teaching. And I send you a video about every five days. Let's get back to the video. I'm just gonna call back Ivana. All right, Ivana, what we're going to do now is we're going to just try something else, okay? Just a couple of other things. 
I'm going to go to the chat window. So can you do the same? Can you click on the chat window to open it up yeah. on the bottom of the screen? And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click here and I'm going to create a poll because I want you to answer the poll. So I'm going to click on create poll and hopefully it's going to allow me to create a poll. And I'm just going to put here option one. So here is my question. What country are you from? So I'm just going to write in my question here. What country are you from? And then I'm going to put two options. So I'm going to put Poland. I'm going to put France. Okay. And now I'm just going to create that poll. And just tell me what you can see when I click on this button. Uh, I can see the question. Okay. And what can you do? Can you click on it or can you do anything? Yes. Yes, I can click on the correct answer. Okay, click on the correct answer for me. Yep. Okay, and I can immediately see now that Ivona has chosen Poland. Okay, now Ivona, let's see if you can do the same for me. If you go down to the bottom of the screen next to the chat and click on the three dots on the right hand side at the bottom. Yes. Ivona. Yes. Can you make a poll for me? Is it possible for you to send a poll to me? And let's see if I can answer your question. Okay, done. Okay, so I can now say, which country are you from? And Yvonne has written the question correctly. I wrote what country, she should say which, English people often do that. And I'm gonna click on Great Britain. Okay, and hopefully, what does it say now next to Great Britain, Yvonne? It says one. Exactly. Yes. So now you know that one person has answered the question. So the great thing about polls is that not only can you make a poll, but your students can also make polls. One of the most important things in Skype is the chat window. We can share loads of things in the chat window. We've already seen one example, but we can also, of course, just write to students, send links to students, and even share files with students. Ivana, I'm okay. going to just send you mm -hmm. a quick chat. So I'm just going to say hello to you. Okay in the chat window can you okay. just respond to me okay. yeah hello okay brilliant okay Yvonne now what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you a file so I'm just going to click and I'm going to share a file with you from my computer and I want you to tell me if it works so I'm just going to come over to my pictures and I'll just grab a really small picture of me that I know I've got a couple of quite small ones for, for, for example this one here just going to click on open and hopefully you will receive that image okay i'm just going to click on send to send it to you so i've just sent you an image can you tell me if you can receive that image yes i've received the image brilliant okay let's just try another thing this time what i'm going to do is i'm going to click over to the web a website and i'm just going to open up uh, a website and send you a link i'll send you a link to my website so i'm going to copy this Come back again to the main window of Skype and I'm going to paste in the link. And again, I click on this button here and now you should be able to click on that link and open the website. Can you try that? Correct. Yes. Okay. It's working. Brilliant. Yes. Okay. A new feature in Skype is the ability to turn on subtitles. You can turn on the subtitles for yourself and your students can turn on the subtitles for themselves as well. And that means that when you're talking, they will see subtitles as well as hear you. So what I wanna do now is show you how the subtitles work. Now I'm just gonna comment over this as you watch it. You can see now I'm going over to turn on subtitles. Now when I turn the subtitles on, it will mean the subtitles will work for me. And when Ivana speaks, the subtitles will appear on the screen. Ivana will need to do the same thing if she wants subtitles, so then... Okay, done. Now, when I'm talking, I want you to speak very slowly to me. And when I'm talking to you, I'm going to speak very slowly. Can you see subtitles on the screen? Yes, I can see the subtitles. Okay, just tell me a few things about me, about you. Tell me where you're from, what languages you speak, and what you're interested in. Say it very slowly. Uh, my name is Ivona, I'm from Poland, uh, I speak uh, Polish and English. And what are you interested in, Ivona? I like uh, sport, particularly yoga. 
Okay, all right. So now you see how the subtitles work. How clear are the subtitles for you, Ivana? Does it help you to understand me? Can you see the subtitles on the screen? Uh, yes, yes. They uh, work in really well. Okay, so one of the things about subtitles, if you're a teacher, you need to speak very clearly and slowly for the subtitles to work really well. But it can be a way of supporting the students. Another nice feature is the reactions. I'm gonna quickly show you how the reactions work. There are a variety of them and they can be fun. Now we've also got one other button here, Ivana. I'm gonna click on, on, on this. Can, what can you see now on the screen? Hearts. Exactly, okay, so I clicked on react. So maybe you can go to the reaction and send a reaction to me as well. Okay. Okay, so in this video, brilliant, I saw those clapping hands onto the screen. <laughs> All right, now one final thing we could do today is if we wanted other people to join the call with us, so if we wanted more than two students in the call, we can click on add participants and it will allow us to simply click on another and then get them to join. And we can click on someone's name and click on add and then they will be invited into the conversation as well. So we can actually have a conversation with more or a lesson with more than two people and that is the way to do it. Really hoped you liked that video. Please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. Loads more free content and you can see all of my courses on the opening page. Don't forget to sign up to the newsletter. That way you get updated with all the latest blog posts, the webinars, the latest videos and the courses. Of course, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to click on the bell. Uh, that way you'll get all the updates. And finally, if you do want to contact me, perhaps about doing a conference or doing some training with your organization, you can contact me from the website. Thank you very much. Okay, on the screen now, I'm gonna leave some other videos that I think you'll find really interesting if you're a teacher and you're teaching online.